Uh, um, I want to get in. I want to continue with this uh, philosophy of mathematics. So it's kind of a, uh, it's a kind of an analytic philosophy that gets into all other kinds of analytic philosophy. It uh, it's a kind of a philosophy that t uh, discusses what mathematical entities are, like what's what numbers are. And what mathematical structures are, and it sort of goes into philosophy of mind. It goes into epistemology, definitely. It goes into philosophy of language, metaphysics, and ontology, and um, everything that's within those fields. And I really like it because of how it goes into those kinds of things. It's it's really interesting to me because of all that. But it's a little bit of a, it's a it's a kind of a tricky kind of feel that's a little bit um, hard to get into. It's kind of hard for me to even get into because it's so it's a little bit complicated. But I mean, the beginning people who are in classical like Plato and Aristotle and Kant are not very hard to figure out. But people like Mill are difficult to figure out. Uh, they're Mill, well, I guess Mill is, is not that hard to figure out, but he's a little tricky to understand. But I'm, I, I will get into him, you know, uh, this month. But here, here, here's, here's, here's what I'm going to do. Um, here, here's what the way it goes. It, go, it goes from Plato to Aristotle to, um, to Kant to Mill. And then it jumps ahead considerably um, into Frege. Now, Frege is the person who started logicism, or the belief that mathematical entities are logical entities, that mathematics is logic. And then Russell was also part of that, and then you had formalism with David Hilbert, and uh, and then uh, you had intuition, intuitionism with um, Brewer and Hating and uh, Michael Dummett. But I'm, I want to here's 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 what I'm gonna do this whole month. Um, I'll, I'll have a lot more opportunities to make videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this book, um, Stuart Shapiro's Thinking About Mathematics. And I'm gonna get in. I've I've gotten into Plato's mathematics, Plato's philosophy of math, already. You can find that video um, right here. Um, it's it goes into it pretty well because Plato is relatively easy. His uh, metaphysics are easy, and um, because basically his, all all of his metaphysics comes comes out of forms. But. Uh, and throughout, throughout this month, I'm going to use this book to go from uh, Aristotle to uh, um, the current scene of philosophy of mathematics. So, here's here's what, what I'm going to do today. Is I'm, today I'm going to um, discuss. I'm going to discuss. Um, Plato's mathematics today. Plato's philosophy of, of mathematics, and the, way, the way it has been for the last forty years or so, and it's sort of going to be a little installment into why Plato's philosophy of ma mathematics is important, and it's going to be like a, a bit of a introduction to philosophy of mathematics and basically what this book discusses in the very beginning of it. It has its sort of a has a chapter. Um, Mathematics for a philosopher, um, and then it talks about um, attempted questions and answers, and uh, and then after that it goes into Plato's rationalism, as well as, as well as Aristotle. But what I want to do today is in this video I want to discuss what how mathematics is important for the philosopher, and. Um, and discuss why Plato is is important today. Um, here's what you know the basic idea for philosophy of mathematics is: 
because it has to do with all of these different kinds of fields when a philosopher of mathematics goes down a certain way he has to make sure that his linguistic sort of theory is correct his, his epistemology is in a certain place his ontology or, or metaphysics is in this sort of place as well as his philosophy of mind even and <clears throat> and to have all this correct you know it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time so basically what uh, what separates all these theories all these theories of mathematics and entities has to do with ontology and um, true value and um, ontology we have realism which uh, realism and ontology is Platonism which is what I talked about in this video over here uh, Platonism which is the idea of forms and then the, where the idea of two or an idea of a couple is instantiated in the form of two and um, that's how we get the idea of two is through through the form of two <clears throat> and then the idea of realism and truth value has to do with whether the statements in mathematics in, in this sort of theory are bivalent or not bivalent meaning um, is it possible for them, for, them to, for them to be true or false now we have realism and we have we have um, fictionalism well, first of all now this is gonna I'm gonna get, I'm gonna discuss Aristotle and all the all the, all that I, I need to discuss in of him for my purposes is uh, Aristotle Aristotle has fictionalism what he discusses what Shapiro discusses in his book here is Aristotle's fictionalism where um, like the form of there's no real there's no real forms you know there's only forms as in what I see or what 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 we see like beauty only goes up to the be most beautiful thing I've seen and um, this is not exactly fictionalism but it's what Aristotle said it's not exactly fictionalism but it's what he said Fictionalism is something something different. Um, it's very similar to what it's um, it's it's a, it is a Aristotelian sort of field, but he said that forms are only the most extreme thing of all those things that I've seen before. And if there's no abstract entities, there's no abstracta or anything like that that will instantiate the things. So then you know that therefore you you will have a certain ontology and a certain uh, truth value for every theory and then you also have idealism which you have subjective and inner subjective idealism which means uh, subjective idealism is just um, entities based on your mind and or in inner subjective idealism as I've said in my phenomenology videos um, entities based on a group of minds wherein there's also a ontology and a true value or bivalence or amb 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 ambivalence for that sort of idea and then you have nominalism which doesn't believe in any sort of property or form or, or universal at all you have linguistic nominalism which believes that um, every part of mathematical entities is little bits of language that are sort of um, a part of that that sort of make up math that sort of make up mathematical entities so what this whole thing is is that it's sort of a big thing in analytical philosophy 
which involves all of that, all of the fields in analytic philosophy. Like, for example, in today's scene in, in philosophy of mathematics, we have what's called the Quine Putnam indispensability argument, which we have two philosophers, Willard, Willard Van Orman Quine, we have Hilary Putnam, which all have um, ideas. Now, uh, Quine, in his book Theories and Things, he has a, a he has an essay in there called "Success of Success and Limits of Mathematization." I think is what it's called, where he talks about how um, mathematics and the being being abstracta is indispensable because um, it has to do with the best science. Uh, Hilary Putnam has this, has the same thing, and something I think it's called. Uh, I, don't, I forget what what Putnam's was called because I haven't really read Putnam. I've read Quine, but I've I, I've read some Putnam. But uh, Mark Holovan has a good book called um, The Indispensability Argument, which goes way into the Hartree field. It goes into all those uh, arguments. Now, what what this what the argument is is just saying that we have to have ontological commitment in real abstract mathematical entities because they are indispensable to our best scientific theories and our best sciences because mathematics plays a huge explanatory role in these best sciences so we have to have ontological commitment in these abstracta which give us ma mathematical entities so we have to do that that's one little snippet of what the best thing what the best or that's one one of the biggest arguments in the recent scene in the philosophy of mathematics and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into all of it I'm going to get into I'm going to go through Kant um, Mill because I've kind of discussed all I want to discuss about Aristotle so I'm going to get into Kant next then Mill then um, logicism and Frege and Russell and then formalism with Hilbert and then uh, intuitionism with uh, Brewer, Hating, and Dummett I think it's Brewer, Hating, and Dummett yeah it's Brewer, that's, that's Brewer, uh, Brewer, Hating, and Dummett Yeah, see there's Brewer. And the other one's hating it and the other one is Dummett. Dummett is the is the, Dummett is very no is very very well known for its philosophy of language. And um, so yeah, that that, that that that's that's what I'm gonna do. Cause this week I have finals and then um, after that I'll have a lot more time and I'm gonna make a few quite a few more videos, which one of them is going to go get, to get through this whole entire book here. So I've gotten through the first section, but in talking about Plato, and through this this video, I've got I've gotten through the whole first section, the whole first part, the whole first part of the book. Um, I've gotten through all of the all of it because I've kind of summarized it, and now um, and I've done Plato and I've summarized Aristotle so now I can get into uh, Kant, Mill, Logicism, Formalism, Intuitionism and uh, as well as uh, the today's scene and st structuralism and st st stuff like that and, the, and more and there's, there's so much about the Quine Put Putnam indispensability so I'll get a lot into that too and hopefully before I go back to school in January, I can finish the, this stuff, and then I can get into something different. Excuse me. So I will see you probably ne probably next week. Excuse me.
I have hiccups, I'm sorry. <laughs>